Hello everyone. I'm going to be doing a model database because I'm still like isolating with COVID and I'm still bored. Um, I accidentally bought one or two, possibly two locomotives that I've already got because most of my stuff goes straight into boxes and as I said before, some of it's now in a shipping container for storage um, until I sort it out. So I need to record what I've got so I don't make that mistake again. So I'm going to use a database program. I did look at Excel and I know a number of you use Excel. It's got its benefits such as using on tablets and phones and things like that. Access is a PC only, but for my needs, and because I think it's a more powerful tool for this kind of thing, I'm going to be using Access. So I've created the first table, which is kind of all the fields I want to look at, but I'm wondering if I've missed something, hence me approaching you for your experience um, and advice. I feel it's got what I want in it, but for other collectors, there may be some areas that it's useful to record information on that I haven't considered um, being a noob. <laughs> okay, so I thought I'd ask you guys and see what you think. So to make a bit easier on the eye, rather than putting in data here, I've created the first entry form. It's an example, really. It may not be the final version. I've got some tweaking to do, but it's just a bit easier on the eye. And I've done a few drop downs so you don't have to type even, uh, everything in from scratch. Um, each record is given a unique identifying number by the system, so they can't be duplicates like that. So I've started with the manufacturer of the locomotive. Now, to make life easier, there are lots of them. I've done a drop down list. As you can see, it starts with a lot of the ones we see in the UK. It moves on to Europe and then goes on to North America. With most of those, I may have missed some, but I, I think I've got quite a lot of them. Anyway, so we're going to say this one's a Backman model. And then the Max French, we know Backman's got its digit codes. I don't know what this one is, but I'm making it up. But you put that in there, it might be the Hornby R code. Then, in terms of the class, this one example is going to be a class 47, but you might put other things or more details. So it might be a princess coronation class or whatever. And the name of the loco, so this is going to be the um, Lady Diana Spencer, as an example. And then the running number, so we're going to say it's called 4523, um, completely made up. And then it's going to be a diesel. Uh, I might strengthen this a bit because there are a lot more kind of sub-details I could put to make this uh, more realistic. And then for the steam, I've put in the power for classification, so I know with couple of the railways use this including my beloved LMS so there if people want to record it because it might be somebody says well how many 4p's have you got you can find out and just print by 4p then I've done wheel arrangements so I've covered off um, I think pretty much all of them I've included some of the North American big things like it's got the big boy on it and it's got space for the uh, the garrets as well as the diesels such as the uh, four wheel diesel shunters and then I've got your Bobos. Now the Boco, um, one of the Thomas Locos, I'm not sure if there's a model of it or not, but I'll put it in because there may be in the future if there isn't now. And then the Cobos, but this one, let's put this as a Coco. -co. And then the livery. So we're going to say this one's, um, what should we call this one? Let's say it's a GBRF. Um, as the company and it's going to be a uh, blue locomotive because you might want to search for how many blue locomotives or in this case how many pink locomotives and that's what I've got forever and then the finish so at the moment I've just got a pristine or weather but I might do lightly weathered heavily weathered uh, I'd be interested to know what you think about that um, somebody might want to say look how many pristine locos I've got how many weathered locos or especially for those people who want to weather all their locos they might want to show just which ones haven't been um, weathered yet and then the gauges I've worked in loads of those just to make your life a bit easier but I know most of us are going to be using the first few so it's going to be OO and then the coupling type now I was going to do a drop down for this I still might do but there's so many of them it gave me a date and I just thought well I might miss one or two which makes it more confusing so let's just say this one's going to be have a KD on it and then an, it DC, DCC or DCC with sound. So we're putting DC for, C for this one because I want to put a DC in address in. So we're calling this address is 4523 is what we'll label it because of the running number. But you might want to put um, your own in. And then has it got any extras fitted? So I'm talking about things like, yes, yeah, got lights on it and it's got a crew fitted. So we click that. Again, if there's anything I should be putting in that that's not there now, I can add to it. And then what might be useful, is it a boxed? So yes, in the original box, this one's in a wooden presentation box. A few of my Batman ones I've got are. Is it in a replacement box or 
is it in a little box with two or three others or is it completely unboxed as some of my very old ones I first started collecting well and is there any damage you can report it there in terms of the box especially if you're looking at selling them and you can put in the year of manufacture so that's this was made in 2008 oh, wait a minute that's not 2008 now I didn't do a forced kind of year field for this just because people you see you, there isn't one really for just the year without anything else so it's any known faults there's free text there it's long free text hence though those arrows there any known damage you've got so for example I got a loco that I got and one of the wires for the engines come unsoldered so it will remind me that I've got to do that still and if you've got some non runners you can tick that so you can just produce a list of just all your non runners to do something with and then if there are any missing parts for it that you need to find replacing here you can put in and I've got a box to help you with this the last time you serviced it so let's say we serviced it today put today's date in and when do we next want to service it on any of these fields if you don't want to use them you just leave them blank I'm trying to put in stuff to cover everybody so if we want to do it in six months we just put it in um, six months from now and it record it and you can also put in for those people that are keen on recording all these things and I notice a lot of people write down how much they paid and where they got it from so you can do all this in the database as well so let's say we bought this uh, in January and we bought it for the sum we print a uh, price of 79.99 and we bought it from rails of shipping i'll just well that's rounded that up to 80 pounds i need to change that because it, uh, it's because i changed it to two decimal points which has rounded it up that's why i need to change it um it must be something like that i did put in pounds first but then i withdrew the pounds because uh of dollars euros or yen or whatever so i might I might look at that. I'm interested to see what you think. Well, I should just leave it as pound and let people change it themselves on their own database if it's North America, for example. Then also where you store it. So if you store it in the shed or the loft, if you store it in a particular box with a number. So for, let's say for mine is in the container and it's in box 45. I know exactly where to find it. And if it's one of your older locos, more locomotive you'd realize is it a surplus to requirements and you want at some point looking at selling it, you can mark it so you can produce. All of your locos you're interested in selling in one go and any additional notes you might have so you might say this one works very well with for example the royal train set or with this particular type of freight you can write that there so these are the areas i've thought of to make um, record data on is there anything you think that will be useful to collectors that i've missed that I can add to it before i do more work on it so the next stage is to produce some query forms so we can quickly look things up and then some report forms. So the report form might be show me all of my DCC locomotives, show me all of the locomotives I bought from rails, it might be show me all of my pristine or all my weathered, show me anything I've got from Batman, you name it you can do, uh, I'll be doing report forms and then you can say there. So one useful would be for example let's produce um, a report that says all my Batman locomotives, the colour of them, the finish and their DCC code and that's my main running list when I'm running the layout so I can identify a train by the look of it quite easily and without looking at the locomotive I know what it's um, DCC address is straight away and I can run it so there are lots of potential uses if I get the right data in the first place that I can do in reports and reports then could either be looked at just on screens or they can be saved as PDFs taken with you let's say to an exhibition and you just use your phone with the PDF on it without needing the whole database with you. So thoughts please on a postcard and um, at some point I might release this for a very small fee on somewhere like Etsy and um, no doubt with a discount for people who already subscribe. Anyway for those who do offer some advice thank you and I can continue to work on it. Okay bye for now.